maybe we start, if you don't mind, with a little bit around the domestic response in the US to COVID around financial regulation, financial policy. We're finding ourselves in the middle of a, of a strong economic recovery and financial recovery. And that's largely a result of the, the program, the response program that was pushed through our Congress really in an unprecedented way. It was unprecedented in terms of the bipartisan support. It was unprecedented, unprecedented in terms of the time that it took um, to realize uh, the package. The package focused on pumping liquidity into the system, addressing the position with unemployment, gave some focus to state, local, and tribal governments, and also pumped a, a, a high degree of liquidity into the system, both generally and as to specific industries that we viewed as ones like, for example, the airlines that would be most acutely affected. Referencing a couple of numbers, I think is helpful just to highlight where we are uh, and the, the exceptional impact that the program has brought on the consumer side uh, in respect of our position on labor, industrial production, and uh, bankruptcies. What we are seeing as a result of our programs is that retail sales and personal spendings are now higher than they were in February pre-COVID. Uh, consumer confidence has been on the upswing for months and personal bankruptcies, very interestingly, are currently 43% lower than at this point last year. Uh, on the labor front, um, we've added back around half the jobs that were lost to the pandemic. Uh, the unemployment rate has fallen to 7.9% from a post-World War II high of 14.7%. Uh, in addition, uh, industrial production continues to recover. Business investment by a number of different metrics is on the upswing, and services activity surveys point to continued robust activity moving forward. And finally, uh, the emergency Fed facilities that have helped companies issue debt uh, to cope with the pandemic, not to mention uh, the, the extraordinary efforts that we've taken to support our airlines uh, and their workers. There are a couple of, of points that we're, we're very focused on. They're variables with some indicators that uh, present concerns to us. And we are watching these areas very carefully, including high and rising corporate debt, um, asset prices, and NBFIs. What do we expect to be focused on in the next three to six months? COVID really is at the forefront. Um, as I'm sure you and, and all of our viewers are aware, uh, there continues to be a high level of activity on the Hill uh, relating to the next uh, COVID response. Um, and so that really is at the forefront of our policy plate. We are continuing to monitor the health situation and the public health situation as it impacts on uh, the economy and the financial markets. Um, and we stand ready to respond to the challenges as they arise out of COVID. Secondly, we've seen a ramp up uh, in digital payment activity and reliance on digital payments because of the circumstances. And so that is a second area of focus for us. Thirdly, um, we are very focused on uh, LIBOR transition. We're kind of feeling good about the direction of where the transition is going and standing up rules uh, and market transitioning um, in that area, cross-border data flows is the final topic um, on which we are focused. How do you see the dialogue between the US and the EU is going? A concrete outcome that we were able to celebrate uh, at the last US-EU forum was that the EU Commission confirmed that it will set out a framework that will not result in its directly supervising CFTC supervised CCPs. On our end, um, the SEC moved closer to securing EU equivalents for SEC registered CCPs. Thirdly, again on our end, vocal rule implementation uh, exempted the activities of foreign excluded funds from certain restrictions on proprietary trading and compliance obligations, uh, very good for European funds. And then finally, 
um, we were able to record uh, a CFTC exemption of multiple EU authorized trading venues from registering as swap, swap execution facilities. Let's look at the EU US dialogue. What, what do you see as some of the core areas over the next six months, next year, that you think will be on the table? On the growth side, we're really very much focused on the increasing behavior and activity that comes out of the emergence of fintech. The most important focus for us uh, is, on the, is on the data side. Um, and we are working with the EU, but not only the EU, uh, on the data initiative. This flow of data and its value has surpassed uh, a combination of values of flows of goods and services. And so um, that highlights the importance to growth of free flows of data. And it also highlights the importance of our need to confront areas, regions, and countries that are imposing restrictive data policies. Second growth area in FinTech, um, we kind of can't have a conversation uh, without talking about uh, digital currency and crypto. Um, that is very high on the agenda with our colleagues in, in, in the EU as well as elsewhere. And uh, we're focused on the need to foster growth in this area, but as well um, the need to ensure that that growth occurs on a reg and tech neutral basis and, and to ensure that the growth occurs with the appropriate level of stability. And there are some really interesting and very, very important regulatory issues that this area brings up uh, in respect of uh, AML uh, and CFT and other, other related concerns. So digital operational resilience is a key focus and high on the agenda with our colleagues in the EU as well as elsewhere. The EU appears to be increasingly conditioning equivalence on broader political and strategic considerations. And so that is an issue that does require more focus and more attention Sustainable finance, climate finance, means different things to different people. We are very, very much focused on financial stability impacts of environmental circumstances. We do need to spend much more time focusing with our colleagues in the EU and elsewhere to ensure that um, the proposed and the actual regulations that are put into place are jurisdictionally neutral and are, are appropriately jurisdictionally sized and fitted to ensure a uh, smooth regulatory sync so as to ensure that the, the regulatory attempts in one jurisdiction do not uh, discourage or preclude a, a particular funding market uh, as an access point for an issuer that seeks to raise funds in that market. And I'm thinking specifically about EU um, disclosure requirements and their impact on US issuers that are desirous to tap into the UK capital markets. What do you think would be some useful milestones, maybe going five, 10 years forward, but not just between the EU and the US, but also globally? My wish and my hope is free flow of information uh, between and among policymakers and regulators and coordinated action to ensure that we are, we are ahead of the game and we are ahead of the game in a manner that is supporting the really the explosive growth that we're seeing, but um, that we're supporting it in a way that is safe and sound and prudential and technology neutral.